Welcome to the Future of Flushing. I'm Vito Khaleesi. That's Jonathan Barron. We're here with Brendan Sprout. Brendan, you're at your first Mets spring training. We're here at uh, Port St. Lucie, Clover Field. How does it feel to be Clover here? Clover Park. Clover Park. Let's keep going. Who cares? Clover it's, Park. Hey, we'll, we'll keep it casual. What's a field the versus a park? Keep it casual. <laughs> That's right. What's a field? What's a park? Ooh. I feel like a field is one singular. I feel like a park is many fields. That's a complex. It could be a complex. That's a complex. That, yeah, 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 yeah. What did I say again? You said you Clover said, Field. Ah, and it is yeah. a park. Yeah. It's Clover Park. Uh, no, it's definitely, it's been good. Um, weather's been super nice these past couple of days. Um, so you like the cold? Because it's been freezing the last few days. You think so? Today was, yeah, today, man. this morning was freezing, dude. High of 68 in Florida. See, like, where, where, I, where I'm from, which is way up in Panhandle, uh, cold to me is like in the 20s. Oh, no, I mean, we're does from it, New York. Does it get like that there? Yeah. Really? Yeah, like 20, 30s. Oh, okay, so yeah. that's similar. Yeah. Here, here's our challenge. Like Vito said, we live up north in New York. When you pack for Florida, right, in February, you're like, ah, shorts, yeah, t-shirts, tanks. Yeah, you don't think a jacket or... No, no sweatshirts, no pants, none of that. I'm so underprepared. And then you get hit by it, and you're like, oh my god, I, I made a massive mistake. I mean, yeah. it's been like 65, if, you know, this week. Yeah, yeah then the, the worst part is like, the cold here is completely different than like up north. I mean, I've never, I haven't been to New York when it's cold, but like, that's what I've been told is like, cold here, from what, what I know is like, it's like a bone chilling, like wet cold. Oh yeah. yeah. And then up north, it's like a dry cold. Yeah. yeah. So. You need to get a Canada Goose. What this is guy, that? This guy, oh my Canada God. Canada Goose jacket. This guy's in like Never a, heard of it. Th- no? You want to hear, hear how well this podcast is doing? This guy's in a $2,000 jacket. <laughs> it's not $2,000. He had it before we started the podcast, so it has nothing to do with the other. Nice, nice. Yeah, but no, he, you got to stay warm. He brags warm, about it. I don't brag. I've never said a word about my can, my jacket. He sends me TikToks and about having one. And they're not, uh, yeah, making fun of it. And they're not a partner of the show, so we probably shouldn't be giving them. <laughs> Maybe the three of us will be wearing Canada Gooses hey, you next never time. Know. Send them here. Yeah, you never know. Anyway, I, we keep getting you off track, but just how's it feel to be here? No, it feels good. It feels to feels good to finally be back out here with all the guys. Um, honestly, I think I think the the best part, like beside like, outside like the baseball aspect, is like just meeting a bunch of new people. Um, I met a bunch of cool guys from like different areas, different schools, so some high schoolers. Um, but, like honestly, the best the best thing is everyone here is so like so very like super nice. Really, I love to go out of their way to just to say what's up to you. Um, everyone's super helpful. Everyone's you, everyone's pretty much in a good mood in, uh, every day. Um, I mean, you can't complain to be able to come out here every single day and, and do what you love. As is the case with many things in life, uh, you getting here was not a direct path. Mets took you out of the draft in 2022. Yep. You did not sign. You went back to Florida for your senior year. You had a great year at Florida. You guys went to the College World Series, which that program does quite frequently. Yeah. Um, and then the Mets offered you a reconsent form to draft you again. They obviously had interest. You're a very talented young man, and you said yes, and they drafted you, and you signed. So why did you want to sign with the Mets ultimately after all that happened before? Um, you know, back in 2022, things didn't play out the way I wanted it to, um, and I, I'm not gonna lie, it was it was very frustrating, um, and I, I, I chose in my best interest to, to go back to school had probably one of the most fun years of my life. Um, college is good, man. <laughs> college college, college is, is something else. Honestly, like... <laughs> I concur. If, if, I, if I was a high schooler, like, like, I would advise you to go to college. Um, Why is that? You know, honestly, just, like, you get to college and, like, you, you, you see, like, how good, like, everyone is. It's, like, you get there, like... And like, yeah, you're a top prospect out of high school and you get there, but like everyone's almost like this at the same level that you are. And not only that, like you get to lean on older guys and pick their brain and you get to go through, I mean, a ton of ups and downs. And my, outside of baseball, like you get to, you get to have the college experience. Um, you know, you go to class and you, you can, you meet new guys, new people. Um, and you just create so many memories um, away from the field as well. Um, like I said, like college for me, like was probably the best four years of my life. Um, got my degree. Um, what was your degree in? All right, so this one's this is gonna be interesting. So it's <laughs> so I originally wanted to do uh, just general business. Okay. Um, my freshman fall, I took uh, uh, business calculus, 
huh. whoop, whoop my tail. Smartest guy on the set here. <laughs> whoop my tail. I, I luckily pulled out with a B minus. Ooh, yeah. luckily. Yeah. Well, luckily I, only a B minus. <laughs> My well, mom would be thrilled. I, I, I was I was the type of person that was like I was always on top of my grades. Um, if I got like a C, I'd freak out. Um, but I went to my advisor and I'm like, Hey, look, I think I'm at the end of my ropes here when it comes to this math this math side. And I loved math all the way through school, but I got to the point where uh, it was a struggle. Uh, she was like, Okay, like so we're gonna we're gonna put you in what, what is called food and resource economics. So basically, that is a business degree on the agricultural side. Um, it's a lot. It's a lot more straightforward and a lot less math. And I was like, okay, sign me up. So that's what my degree is in. Okay. Um, so I had that under my belt just in case baseball doesn't work out in the near future. I have something to fall 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 back on, and that's that's something I actually promised my dad um, when I went to college. He he, t he told me he's like, hey, he's like. No matter what happens, he's like, promise, you, promise me you get your degree. Was that a big part of you deciding to go back to school? It was. It was. You know, um, honestly, even though, like, even when I made that promise and I could have gone after my junior year to go to the Mets since Pro Bowl, um, I feel like for me it definitely would have been super hard um, to juggle both things. Um, but, yeah, I mean, going back to my fourth year, it's like, okay, like, I have a year to – to go out, get better, draft stock, it is what it is at that point. You know, being a senior, I can't control that. Um, but really, go back for another year, have a chance to go to Omaha, which was one of my dreams. That was fulfilled. And then got my degree under, under in, my, in my fourth year as well. So, um, honestly, those are, the, those are the big reasons why I chose to go back. Um, and then, with that being said, I went back and, like I said, had the year of my life did good um, and honestly you know like being a senior it's like you really have no choice um, really to it's like I'm gonna, not gonna go back my fifth year because right. really that doesn't make any sense plus like I had nothing left there for me I got I had my degree made Omaha unfortunately lost in the final game but Dang to tigers. me but to me that was all all a success um, is everything I ever wanted and so you know with the whole thing with the Mets I, I put that behind me and I was like, okay, like, I'm going to have a clean slate going forward and we'll move forward. And honestly, I, I love it here. I mean, it's, it's a lot of fun. Like I said, everyone's super nice, super helpful. Something you brought up before was that you would recommend everybody to go to college. Talking about, like, how hard it is for these high schoolers to come up here. Do you think part of that is that college is a nice in-between of, like, kind of turning baseball into a job? Yeah, I mean, honestly, like, it's like, it's like, it's, to me, like, it's your home away from home. Like you, you have to, to grow up some. You have to take responsibilities of getting up in the morning, going to, to workouts at 6, 7 a.m., and then going back to your apartment, showering quick, heading to class, making sure that you're eating um, right and the right amount of food, and then make sure you're, make sure, making sure you're getting to the field at the right time. And then on top, on the biggest thing is getting your schoolwork done. So you got to really pri prioritize things. Um, so like it, it really helps you mature in that aspect and kind of like grow up on your own. But it's not technically on your own because you still have your teammates there to help you and, and whatnot. Um, and you have your academic advisor and, and and all that stuff to help you. So it's kind of on your own, but not on your own in that aspect. Well, you're, it's the first time you have all of this attention on you at a national level. I mean, like, obviously, high school prospects have that, but being at the college level is so different. You don't have your parents there watching no. you. And, like, you know, we talked to some of these high schoolers, and I'm not going to name any names, but a few of them last year, they got here, and they all went out and bought separate PS5s and had it in their well, now room. Now you just doxed them, because all you got to do is go back and watch the... Uh, Another episode of Future of Washington. Yeah. Go back through all of our episodes. Well, I, know, I know exactly who you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> right, cool. we oh, because you were at the camp. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I was here. What do you think of that, by the way? Ridiculous, right? Just get one PS5 and just play in the same room. But uh, what, what happens when they move up at different levels? Well, no, that's sure. fine. But then, why, then you buy one. When they're all sharing a room, why would they just all buy so, one? So you're saying... If everyone wants a PS5 to like take home with them, you might as well just get it, right? All right, you know yeah. what? I never thought of it like that. I like, get I'm that. Like, but I'm you not gonna want to like. Have did you get? Did you get a PS? You got an Xbox. I got an right? Xbox. All right. Um, Crossplay. No, dude, yeah. I'm not saying don't get your own PS5. I'm saying I would go. Okay, for the time being. You have one. We have one, mm -hmm. and then when it's time, I'll spend that $500 a different day. Yeah, That's but the way I see it is like I'm gonna want to play like at least with you. Yeah. Like some games you can't play uh, play like split screen or whatnot. That's fair. They want their own. You know what? That's why you're the math major. 
That's no, true. Not the math major. <laughs> you're the math. You're the business guy. That's true. But no, I, I look. I totally understand what you're saying. I thought college for me. I mean, you know, I, I didn't play uh, college ball at Florida, but I think it's the lessons that you learned outside the classroom that were the most important and impactful yeah. ones. And I'm sure that you now being here as you start your pro career, like you're already a polished young man because of all the responsibilities that no one was there to hold your hand for. Like there's no safety netting once yeah. you're in college and that's gonna help you here and it's gonna help you throughout the season as, and as you advance in your career. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, I, I went through many highs and lows like on and on and off the field. And I mean like, college like it teaches you that and like there is no coming home to your parents hey can you help me with this like you got to figure it out on your own uh, you got to you got to figure it out on your own and then once you get to that point where you can't figure it out then you can go ask for help but in that meantime like, you got you got to really try to figure it out 100 percent. now you were drafted with a lot of high school guys i mean we just kind of alluded yeah. to some of them um, you also went to City Field after the draft when you signed your contract. I did. What was that experience like going to New York, being at the big ballpark, and just getting soaking that all in? Um, so we'll start at the New York part. Okay. <laughs> First time ever being to like a big um, city. What was the biggest one you had been to before that? Uh, Chicago. That's pretty, oh, that's big, pretty big. Yeah. That's but a confusing it, it was one like, too. We didn't really walk around though when, when I went there. I went there for, for, for some like showcase thing. It was like kind of like. Pop in, do like do do whatever. And do you go like, to the Bean? What is that? Mm, yeah, it's didn't not go. important. Yeah, and it's then dumb. leave. Uh, anyways, <laughs> so I went to New York, um, walked around Times Square. Nice. I turned the corner because we were like right around the corner. We walked. I turned the corner and just like looked up and like saw all the buildings, and I was just like, "What in the world is this?" Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, I'm from like a super small town. I mean, not many people. Like, I mean, literally from across from my high school is a cotton field. Uh, so yeah, so it's definitely a, a different scenery for me, um, but no, it was definitely something like out of my comfort zone. But like, I feel like I could somewhat get used to it. Um, but no, but, but I mean like, at being at City Field, like that was that was fun. Um, being like in a big league park, you know, like walk on the field, meet some people. That that was a lot of fun, and then be able to sit up in one of the suites uh, with the other high schoolers <laughs> um, <laughs> with them and kind of just talk to them, like their journey and whatnot. Um, that, that was, it, it was fun. I liked it. So how, how big is the town you're from? I would say my graduating class was four, 500. That's not, okay. That's not too small. It's, no. it's not too small. But that's the whole, that's not like where we're from, more like the different, like there's a few different schools sometimes in different, like everybody's going to the same school for the most part, right? Yeah. So your town, probably a few thousand people. Yeah. Do you know how many, do you want to take a guess at how many people walk through Times Square on a daily basis? Oh gosh. Oh, I want to guess too. Do you know the walk. exact number? I do. I know, the, like the I know like the average, yeah. Daily basis, walk through. All right, you go first. Actually, no, we got to both shout out at the same this time. Because is, this is one of my favorite things about Times Square. And like, I'm, I'm born and raised in New York City and I love from Manhattan, that, you know. I'm from Manhattan. Okay. Yeah. And there's a, there's a, there's a, what I love is that on one city block, there are people walking with triple that of their town. Like that Jeez. blows my mind. Yeah. All right, so let's, All right. everybody guess. Do you guess. have a number? I'm, give me a second. I'm, I'm trying to do some quick math Daily. in my here. Daily. Daily walking through. All right. Daily. All right. I mean, I'll, okay. I think I have a number, I guess. All right, so I'll say three, two, one, go. Yeah, I have fine. no idea. Three, two, one, go. Two million. 1.5. 330,000. Uh, on New Year's, 1.2 million to 2 million miles okay. through. But yeah, like it's, Times Square is nuts, but what was it like being at City Field? Um, like I said, like it was a lot of fun. Definitely a lot of people there. Um, just like being able, to, being able to watch like the big league game, that was a lot of fun. So you didn't pitch a pro ball last year. You came down here and uh, you threw some bullpens, but you're now entering your first full season of pro ball. Yep. Um, how excited are you for that, and what are you thinking are going to be the biggest challenges for you? Um, you know, honestly, like, well, let's say, like, I'm, I'm super excited um, about it. You know, it's, it's everything, that I, something I've always dreamed of ever since I was a kid, uh, to be able to play pro ball. Um, you know, just being out here, grinding day in and day out with all these guys, it's, it's kind of like that same college feel. Um, right now, we're, like, we're all with the same guys, so it's like, like I said, the same college feel. Um, but honestly, some of the biggest challenge, really, honestly, I think is 
It's something that I've definitely gotten a lot better at um, over this past year and a half is really just being where my feet are, to be honest. Um, kind of just taking everything in from player stand, from a player's standpoint to a coach's standpoint and just being, being present in, in what I'm doing and where I'm at. Um, you know, like I said, it's definitely an uh, opportunity and a blessing to be able to come out here every single day and do what I've uh, dreamed of doing ever since I was a kid. And, um, and it's, it's what I love to do. Um, so it's definitely a blessing um, from that standpoint. But I mean, really just not, not let myself get ahead of everything. And like I said, just, just be where I'm at at all times and everything will kind of just take care of, the, take care of the, uh, itself, so. So final thing we're gonna ask you, we ask all you guys this, um, just Mets fans getting to know you, what is something that the fans should know about you at City Field that they, that you'd like to tell them? Yeah, um, honestly, like as myself, as like as a person, on the field and off the field. On on the field and off the field, um, whether it's from a start to a day off or to just regular catch play, um, I'm very like laid back and relaxed. Um, whether I said whether it's from a start day or a day off, I mean you can come to me, say hi ask for autograph, whatever it might be, a picture. I mean, like I said, like, I'm the type of person that's like, for me to be my best, I'm just, I have to be super relaxed and just laid back. And that's just kind of who I am. And I think that kind of helps me of, like, like I said, being being where my feet are. That kind of, just be in the moment, be, be present. That helps me like, stay relaxed and whatnot. But I mean, super fun, super outgoing. Um, I will say I am kind of shy at first, but once you get to know me, then, I don't really stop talking. So you haven't been shy in this interview at all. Well, I've been through qu quite a bit of these through three or four years. Yeah. All right. We were your favorite, right? Yeah, of course, of okay. course. All right. Vito lied to you, so maybe we're not your favorite. We got one more. Question. I realized that as yeah. I said that. So we actually do ask everyone this question. We on ask this both. Don't act like we don't ask both. We ask both. both. We ask both. But this is the big one. When you are taking the warm-up pitches on the mound at City Field, first start, first appearance, what's the song going to be? Ooh, goodness. Hard hitting questions. Mm. That's definitely a good one. I really don't know, to be honest. Nah, what do you use? What did you use last year? So, last year, so the past two years, I used um, my junior years. I My junior year, I used uh, Kickstart My Heart by Motley Crue. That's a good one. And then last year I used Live the Night by W&W. Okay. It's, it's a little EDM. That's a big difference. It is. Yeah. It is. But I love a variety. I love yeah, the no, spectrum. It's, it's definitely like a variety there. But like, honestly, honestly, like to me, it's like whatever the crowd can get into. Um, that kind of kind of hypes me up, but kind of hypes the whole stadium up as well. All so right. we'll, we'll, we'll definitely uh, we'll see what happens, see what song it is when I get there. Cool. Well, awesome. thanks so much for joining us today. I appreciate it. Best of luck. Looking forward to Thank seeing you. It.